Let's talk about how to triple the amount of leads your website generates. You need three things, but let's talk about the problem first. The problem with most websites to this day is the bounce rate is too damn high. Yes, that was the, one of the guys who ran for president a while back. Um, and he has been made into a meme way too many times um, because his whole campaign was the rent is too high in New York City. Uh, but he's still amusing. So bounce rate on your website. What's a bounce rate? The bounce rate is people who go to your website and leave bounce away without taking any further action. So a high bounce rate could be um, because you have a poor website design, because your website is slow to load, because people don't know what to do on your website, or because they get there and they think, oh, this isn't what I want. The average bounce rate from Google desktop search as of two weeks ago is 41.2%, which is a lot. Um, anything less than 24% would put you in the best 20% of the sites on the internet and less than 17% would be the best 10% of websites on the internet. So if you have a website or a funnel or some type of landing page, if you have any type of analytics on that, like Google Analytics, which is free, which we would highly suggest, it will tell you what your bounce rate is for any time period. And then you can say, wow, people really stick around on my website, I'm doing great. Or, wow, we had one, uh, Larry, uh, who works for us, and I did a consultation yesterday with a female uh, coach, and the month before she hired us, her bounce rate was 90%, which means almost everybody who's going to her website is leaving in a relatively short period of time, which suggests there's some serious, there's some challenges to overcome, things to fix on her website. So my analogy for how to make this stick in your heads is if you ran ads on TV and you had a retail store, for example, my mother and father-in-law have a health food store on Transit Road in Dubuque. If they actually did some advertising and ran ads on television and half the people came into their store left without buying anything, you'd probably be pretty pissed. They would be mad at their television rep who sold them the ad and they would be mad going, why aren't customers buying anything? But as website owners, a lot of us don't even think about it. We don't even notice, we don't even care, um, or we don't know what's happening on our website. And we just go, oh, bummer. We don't actually fix it. You don't want to end up like this guy who has no customers. So the online equivalent, I'm going to throw, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, this is Manhattan's American Bar and Grill. Uh, we were just referred to them. I believe they are out in Illinois somewhere, but you will see their website has a giant picture of food, which is, it's a restaurant. You would think they should have a picture of food. However, their bounce rate is way higher than it should be because all they have is a picture, giant picture of food above the fold on their website. And since a large percentage of traffic these days is on your cell phone, you need to look at your website on your phone. And one, is it look good on a phone? And two, how much do they have to scroll before they get to something to make them take action? Um, this is our very own Bill Kenoki, Let's Talk Selling. Uh, I, I, I voluntold Bill to be thrown under the bus. You will see he's got a clip art stock photo of people talking to each other. Um, it has a start here button, but I don't know what does start here mean. I don't know why I should start here. I don't know what I'm looking for. Now I do notice in his navigation bar, twice on his navigation bar, he's got ebook, but I don't know what ebook it is or why I should click on it or why I should get it. You cannot assume anybody knows anything when they get to your website and that they would know what to do. So what's the solution? Number one, what are the three secrets to triple your website lead? Secret number one, and you want to write these down. See, I see Anne Marie's got her pad ready. She's all set. Um, number one, you must, must, must have a lead capture, an automated follow up mechanism. Doesn't matter what business you're in, doesn't matter what the purpose of what you think the purpose of your website is. I don't care if you think it's an online business card or a branding play. You have to have lead capture and automated follow-up. What does that mean? What's an example of that? Well, if you go to marketdominationllc.com, 
our website, one of our websites. And if Bluehost has decided to behave today and actually serve you our website, you will notice there is a sizzle reel video trailer, top, front and center, before you scroll anywhere. And on desktop, it's to the right. On mobile, it's underneath. A form asking for your name, email, cell phone, and how we can help you. Now, if you opt in for that, if you fill that form out, it will take you someplace. And then there will be, you will get a follow-up sequence automatically delivered. We are not physically sending you emails or text messages or calling you. Our software is delivering all that for us, dripping on you to get you to do something. So that is automated follow-up. And ideally, one of the ways to make, one of the mistakes people make who do have automated follow-up on their website, and some of us are more guilty of this than others, is they only use one form of media. What do I mean by that? Well, I asked for name, email, and phone number. If all I do is send you a three-step email sequence, I've dropped the ball. That's one form of media, email. I will always, always, always ask for at least a phone number in addition to email. Because if I get your phone, your cell phone number, I can text you. Again, I'm not going to physically text you. My computer program is going to do it for me. And if I get your phone number, I can automatically leave you what's called a voice broadcast or a direct voice message where it just shows up in your voicemail as like missed call. You have a voicemail. So I can call you. I can text you. I can email you. If I can get direct mail and then drip on you via snail mail, even better. The more ways you have to touch somebody and the more ways you actually touch them, the more they will be worth to you because the more likely they are to do what you want, become a client, get a policy quote, uh, get a portfolio analysis, whatever that is. Uh, does that make sense? Nod your head on camera if that makes sense. All right, Steve, Scott, Adrian, all nodding. Noah, to put his camera on so he can nod, thank you. Uh, this is another example. This is our how to find money for college.com website. I have to read you the video because that was before I got a haircut. Um, but you will notice I'm asking for name, email, cell phone, zip code, and who referred you because the majority of our traffic on that website is driven by referral. Now, I want to keep them on my landing page, my opt in page, as long as I can because Google will reward me for that and it will lower my bounce rate. So what I did underneath that opt-in form, I have a whole bunch of blog articles. I will show you what the actual site looks like. Let me pull it up. So here is our video and our opt-in form. And then under it, we took, we have separate a separate blog page. Every single blog article is a separate page on the site for search engine optimization purposes, but I also put them all on the landing page. So article one, article two, article three, article four. And at the end of every article, there of course is a button to get them to go fill out that form. And the reason why I added all these blog articles and add a new one every week to that page is because if people start reading them, they will be on the site longer. And the longer someone is on your site, the more Google will reward you for it. Google thinks, Google determines how relevant you are and how high you should rank. One of the major factors is done by how long are people on your site and what your bounce rate is. Because if Google, if I do a search for free financial aid for college, and you see my site and you click it and you go to it and five seconds later you click the back arrow google will penalize me for that they they will lower my website ranking google will say oh it must not have been relevant the person left in five seconds they left in under a minute that wasn't what they were looking for that's a bad user experience we can't show them that site anymore so i want to keep them on whatever page they land on as long as i can so that Google will say, wow, they spent a lot of time on that site. They must have really liked it. We're going to show that site to more people. Does that make sense? Yes. Awesome. All right. So now there are many, many different ways to do automated follow-up. You don't have to do what we do. We use a software called Keep, formerly known as Infusionsoft. Now, Infusionsoft is a Ferrari. 
you don't have to start with one and price like one. You don't have to start not like the Ferrari. I mean, it's one of the higher price marketing automation systems for small businesses. Now it does our email follow-up. It does our text message follow-up. It does our voice, voice message follow-up. It has behavioral based action. So anytime you open an email, click a link, get a text message. Anytime you do something or don't do something, I can automatically send you a different sequence based on your actions. It also does our credit card processing and automated billing. Um, it does direct mail. It can do your sales pipeline and tell your sales reps, you know, when to follow up with what leads and a whole bunch of other stuff. You don't have to start with all of this. Take a breath. We did not start with this. All you need to start with is one step. A form that captures their contact information and then one automated follow-up confirmation email. That is a baby step. And then every time it works, get some encouragement, some positive reinforcement, and then add another step. Does that make sense? Yes. Awesome. So secret number one, you must have a lead capture and automated follow-up mechanism. So uh, let's volunteer. Let's take a look at some of your websites and see what we can do. Go. I'm going to go find. So the first person I'm going to grab, because I just happen to know what their website is, is Scott, you're being voluntold. Here is Pest Free. GoPestFree.com. Now, Scott has a super cool background video animation playing, but there is no lead capture automated follow-up before I scroll. You want it above the first scroll. So if I scroll down next, I've got some copy and some images. I'm on, now I can buy now. What if I'm not ready to buy now? Shop now, shop now, shop now, shop now. Aha! Scott has a lead capture device. However, it is his email newsletter at the very bottom of the page. Now, Scott, I love you, but I have some bad news for you. And this applies to everybody. It's not 1999 anymore. Nobody cares about your email newsletter. Right? 99, 2000, man, we subscribed to every email newsletter we could. AOL said, you've got mail. We got all excited. We're like, oh, I got this email newsletter. I'm actually going to read it. Now people get a couple hundred emails a day. Now I am sure there are people on Scott's email list who do read it. Um, he could see in his software that sends it out, his open rate, his click-through rate, all that good stuff. But saying, hey, want to learn about our products and latest industry news. This applies to all of us. Scott, the only people who care about pest control that much is you, right? They're buying your thing and plugging it in so that they don't have to worry about it anymore. They are not pest control obsessed like you are. They're paying you to be pest control obsessed. They probably don't want to read about pest control every day or every week or however often you send it out. I mean, my guess, not trying to offend Scott, is financial advisors, we're totally guilty of this, right? We buy stuff in the industry from Snappy Kraken, um, and compliance approved libraries, and we send out market updates every week, and nobody cares. Because as a financial advisor, your clients don't care about the market update or the economic indicators or what the Fed does. They're paying you to care about that stuff. They're outsourcing that responsibility to you so that they don't have to worry about it. Scott, just out of curiosity, you can unmute. Do you know how many people are on your newsletter list? Uh, currently, it's around about 4,000, I think. And every month, the only, I've only just started doing newsletters since the beginning of the year, just for analytical SEO reasons. So every month, I will probably get about 20 unsubscribes, and usually they might be the new customers. Um, but the open rate, I, I can't remember offhand, but I think last time we were in about 58%. That is amazing. So I'm yeah. going to eat some of my words. So Scott's got 4,000 people on his list. 
So either your how did those are all customers? I'm guessing, right? They get on the email list, not necessarily because they go to the bottom of the page and fill this out, but because I've had they a bought. couple like that. I have had a couple sign up, and oh, wow. each month, as I say, I'm only doing it for SEO purposes and analytical purposes. So my newsletters aren't all about pest control. I write about um, current events, holiday destinations. I always include a monthly recipe as well, just to break it up. That is awesome. So Scott is doing a whole lot, which is probably why he has a 58% open rate, which is amazing. So the fact that he's including warm and fuzzy content and it all just isn't about bugs are some awesome best practices. And it's why people are actually reading it. Because if it was just a dry technical spec specifications of bugs every month or every week, people would be, I would assume, less interested. I don't want to be the bug. <laughs> You don't want to be the bug. I like the pun. Thank you. If this pest free thing doesn't work out, you know, we might be looking for a replacement for Bruce as the king of puns. So let me know. Um, now, one suggestion I would make is I put in my email address and all it says is thank you for signing up. It doesn't take me anywhere. There's no thank you page. Like if it were up to me, once I hit this button, it would take me to a page hey, thanks so much for signing up for the blah, 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 blah. Here's what you can expect. Maybe there's a video showing them a sample. Here's how to whitelist our email so it doesn't land in promotions. Hey, because you signed up for our email newsletter, here's a special 10% off coupon or something. All right, we've thrown Scott under the bus enough. Give me, let's see here, who else wants to volunteer or I will pick? Larson, Larson Insurance. Here, I'm going to Google Larson hey, Insurance. Hey, 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 hey. There's a, there is oh. a, a website link in chat, by the way. Oh, there's a website link in chat. Chill. Oh, this is our favorite uh, travel dude. All right, chillaxtourism.com. All right, can you see the website on my screen? No. Oh, stop share. Reach share. Sorry about that. Okay. So introducing our newest calling number, be the first to call us and get a wonderful service experience. So he does have a call to action and then he wants you to call them. But I would suggest we probably need to change the copy offering that because why, forgive me, but why would my, my, my initial impression would be if I call them, they're going to try and sell me something. Unless I am trying to buy a trip right now and want to talk to someone, I don't want to call them. Um, so I'm going to accept the cookies. I'm going to X out of here. All right. So now I get to the website. And um, again, I do not have a lead generation offer before above the fold. I scroll, I scroll, I scroll. I got nothing. Um, one of the other things I noticed is you've got your prices right on your homepage. Um, so my thought would be, that's great for someone who wants to buy a U uh, Arab Emirates tourist visa right now. But what about the majority of the people who are just looking and aren't ready to buy yet and are doing research? I would have, before they get to the pricing page, I would make them opt in for something. I would... You know, whether it's here's the seven big, how to over avoid the seven biggest mistakes people, Indians make when going to the UAE, when taking their family to the UAE or bringing their family home or whatever it is. I forget from last month, I apologize, but I would have some type of lead magnet to get them to give us their contact information. Because right now, if I look at this, okay, I got pricing. I'm going to, I'm guessing your bounce rate might be kind of high because I see your pricing. Now I'm going to go price shop. And I'm going to go look at other places that are going to help me get my visa and see what prices they've got. And now you're in a price war. And if they can't tell the difference, they're just going to pick whoever the cheapest one is. Whereas if you don't show them prices right away and they have to opt in, at least you're building a list that you can market to. Because right now, if I go here, okay, I know I, I write down your prices and I hit back and I go away, you got nothing. Does that make sense? does make sense. does make sense. I'll change it. Awesome. All right. Okay. So what we're going to do next is 
I'm going to mute you. I'm going to put everybody in breakouts for a minute and uh, well, a few minutes, and you're going to show each other your websites. No judgment. It's okay. That's why you're here. But what I want you to talk about is not the fact that you're missing lead capture and automated follow-up. What I want you to discuss is what could you offer as a lead magnet, if you don't have one, that would get people to part with their contact information? Does that make sense? Nod your head. Nod your head. Anne Marie's nodding. Besides like any besides like a new 